Republicans say the minimum wage will cause an increase in prices. Has that ever happened? I take on Patrick Hedger on the value of the minimum wage. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. To, to kick this thing off, uh, Patrick Hedger is the vice president of policy at the Taxpayers Protection Alliance, a conservative think tank. Prior to this, uh, Patrick was with the Competitive Enterprise Institute's Center for Technology and Innovation and worked at uh, FreedomWorks, the, uh, the right-wing group started by the Koch Network back in the day who brought us all those protests against Obamacare. ProtectingTaxpayers.org is the website, and uh, Patrick Hedger 18 is, or Pat Hedger 18 is Patrick's Twitter handle. Patrick, it's been a long time since we've talked. I'm glad to have you back on the program. Um, I, the, it, it seems to me that the real complaint here that we're getting from giant corporations and even the Congressional Budget Office, which goes out of their way to point out how raising the minimum wage will decrease the rate at which wealth is being transferred from working people up to the top 1%. In other words, it will benefit working people. The real complaint is that these big companies that are paying crap wages are being subsidized with our tax dollars through Medicaid, food stamps, and housing support, and they don't want to lose that subsidy. What say you? Yeah, well, hey, Tom, it's good to see you. It's been too long, and I appreciate you having me back on. Um, so what I would say is, one, one, we're talking about lots of different types of businesses, right? And we're talking about a one-size-fits-all policy. So we're not just talking about the minimum wage as applied to the mega corporations. We're talking about the minimum wage as also applied to the mom-and-pop shops. And what I would say is that what we see, we see the companies that are lobbying for an increase in the minimum wage, they're actually some of the largest retailers and employers in the country. You have Amazon and Walmart and Costco that are already raising their wages to those levels, or at least advocating uh, for a raise in the minimum wage to those levels. And, and, and so I worry that their uh, benevolence on that issue, if you will, is also there's a little bit of uh, cronyism there where they say, hey, look, we can afford to pay these wages, and we know our competitors can't. Um, so I, I get concerned about that because Ultimately, when you start treating wages the same way that you treat cigarettes or want to treat carbon by increasing the price of low wages, you're going to get less people consuming low-wage workers. Um, and, and, and by that, I mean fewer people hiring them or reducing their benefits on the fringe by in, you know, reducing health care benefits or reducing sick leave benefits, but increasing that wage for the people that are able to keep their jobs. So this money is coming from somewhere, um, and it's, it's a worry that the people that were tr trying to help by increasing the national National, national minimum wage uh, would disproportionately be harmed by it. So in other words, you want to maintain these subsidies. You want to maintain a situation where you and I, through our tax dollars, are subsidizing, in your mind, small employers who can't be bothered to put together a business plan where they can actually pay a reasonable wage. You're okay with leaving uh, some 30 million Americans working full-time and living in poverty, uh, that's fine with you. And, and uh, you know, it just seems to me fundamentally immoral even to say that we're going to, as a nation, support people who, whose business model is to exploit workers. I don't get how you could possibly support that, Patrick. Well, because the true minimum wage is always zero, and I'd rather, you know, put people in a position where they can actually command some sort of wage and then gain the knowledge and skills required to be able to command higher wages later on. Yeah, we heard that we, during the Reagan era. You know, that, the, this highfalutin language, you know, the, the reality is that if the, the real minimum wage is not zero. There are only two states, Louisiana and Alabama, that have no minimum wage, although the minimum wage is around five bucks in some states. But when you look at blue states that already have minimum wages of 12 to $15, they're prosperous. And, and beyond that, I would ask you to name one single year. The minimum rate wage has been raised somewhere in the neighborhood of between 25 and 30 times. I'd have to go uh, track down the exact number since it was passed in 1935. And every single time, Republicans, billionaires, and corporations have yelled and screamed about, oh my God, the sky is falling. We're going to have to start laying people off. We're going to lose jobs. And it has never happened. No conservative can point to even one single year 
where when the minimum wage went up, and there have been minimum wage increases that have exceeded 30% on several occasions, where when the minimum wage went up over the next three years, you saw an actual decline in employment. It literally has never, never happened. Otherwise, every Republican in America would be saying, 1973, you don't want to repeat what happened in 1973. My God, it would be a disaster. Well, so the two responses to that. So in certain situations and when, when states raise their minimum wages, um, you may have a catch up effect, right, where the natural wage level is already at a level that's be beyond where the minimum wage is being raised to. And that in and of itself kind of proves the, the, the lack of a need of this policy where you have natural prices that are already raising people to what people are now considering a livable wage or the, 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 the minimum acceptable wage. So there's that. So you have a bit of a catch-up effect where you kind of get away with raising the minimum wage without the major side effects that we would expect. But, you know, just the economic logic tells us that when you raise the price of something, people are going to consume less of it, right? I mean, I, I would assume, I don't know, I haven't watched your show in a while, but I would assume you're probably in favor of a price on carbon. Why? Because you want people to uh, produce less carbon. Right? Carbon is not so people. But it's still it is a byproduct. We're talking people here, Patrick. We're talking human beings. We're talking people who have to go home and face their kids every week and say, I'm sorry, there's not going to be enough food on Friday. Man, I'm just as concerned about them as you are. I'm just concerned that when you raise the wage I level to their employer, then so. they lose their job. I mean, that's what I mean by the true minimum wage being zero is when people, there's an employment displacement. Um, and when If an employer are, cannot raising, afford to pay, if an employer has put together, small or large, has put together a business plan for their business where they can't afford to pay minimum wage people, then they have a flawed business model. It's just well, that so again, you're, what you're advocating there is zero dollar wages for the job. No, that are I believe in the marketplace. I, I mean, what I'm I, saying, Patrick, is if somebody goes out of business because they can't afford to pay their workers, there's a hundred entrepreneurs behind them who will come into that same marketplace and provide that same good or service and pay a minimum wage. People can figure this out. Entrepreneurs are smart people. They're not idiots. That's why, again, in in a hundred years, raising the minimum wage has never caused a loss of employment. I just don't see that as the case. When I mean, we saw numerous studies that happened in Washington State where jobs were, when they raised the minimum wage in Seattle, you had people that were taking on employment uh, outside of the city limits that uh, traditionally lived in Seattle because they couldn't find the hours or the benefits that they needed to sustain themselves. Even though and the prosperity expand and prosperity up. increased. Right, but and, 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 and along with that, prosperity was more demand for goods and services and more economic activity. The more money well, you can right, inject again, at the bottom, Patrick, you know this. Of, Come on, you have an economics background. The more money you can inject at the bottom, the more you're going to stimulate the economy. Well, again, you're talking about it's not injecting more money. I mean, business owners aren't exactly lining their pockets right now. We're talking about an economy where we've just injected hundreds of billions of dollars out of thin air from the federal government uh, into small businesses to keep their doors open uh, or keep their doors shut, if you will. So I just don't know where you think this is coming from. All righty. I'll leave you with the last word. Patrick Hedger, Vice President of Policy at the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. The website is protectingtaxpayers.org. You can tweet Pat Patrick at Pat Hedger, H-E-D-G-E-R 18, Pat Hedger 18. Pat, 